Hi, I'm Mary Corcoran, and I want to tell you a couple things about pressing for quilting. I hate ironing. When I was a child, I avoided ironing because my mother would go in the basement to iron, and I would watch football with my dad. It seemed a better choice. So now that I love to quilt, I still hate to iron, but I'm always willing to press my patchwork because it makes it come out better. Ironing and pressing are not the same thing. Ironing is a scrubbing motion where you're getting the wrinkles out of shirts. Pressing is a very gentle motion where you don't want to distort any of the fibers of your cotton piecing because cotton has a memory and if you distort it while you press it, you're going to have distortions in your piecing. So you want to press carefully and pressing is the key to accurate piecing. Let me show you a couple of little ideas that I like to use. When I am pressing the back of my piecing, I'm always pressing from the back. Or pardon me, I'm always pressing from the front. What I want to do is if you press from the back, you don't always get all of the fabric available out, which means that you could end up with little tucks in your seam allowances, which is why I press from the front to press the seams open. But I sometimes will take time to press a few things from the back, and that is intersections like this. You can see that this is open so that it spins all the way around. What this means is you don't end up with a bulky intersection. This is nice and flat, which allows all of your patchwork to lay flat, and it makes it so much easier to quilt. What I've done here to open this up is I finger pressed it. So here's a little four patch. One of the great ways to reduce bulk at intersections is to consider twirling your seam allowances. So you can see on this four patch, if I want to open this up nice and flat, what I'm going to do is this seam that I previously pressed goes this way and this one goes this way. So this one should come up, but that means this one should go down. And just by moving it, it came open just like that. Now, if you've used a really tight seam, you may need to use a seam ripper and pull just one thread out in order to get it to open up. But using an average stitch length, I have no problem opening seams just by pressing it in that direction. So now you see this little tiny four patch in the middle, and I can just press that with my fingers, and it's laying flat already. What I like to do, though, is go ahead and take it to the ironing board and also press it from the top to make sure that I don't have any fabric left in these seam allowances. So I'll start with a finger press to open things up and finish it at the ironing board with a gentle press. This is the back of the 9 o'clock sharp quilt and you can see that I've opened the intersections on the back of the 9 patch in the same way that I did on that 4 patch. So what we've got here before it went together are the segments from the pattern that were light, dark, light, and dark, light, dark. What I've done is I've pressed toward the dark fabric, so you can see in this segment it's pressed toward the dark, and in this segment it's also pressed toward the dark. When you press toward the dark, it allows the intersections to nestle. They're going the opposite direction, so that when you put two of them together, these are going that way, these are going this way, and it makes it easy to open up these intersections for a nice flat place. So I sewed this segment to this segment, and I opened up those segments, finger pressed the seams to go in the opposite direction, and then did the same thing adding another light dark light segment, and that gives a nine patch that lays nice and flat.